Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hi, welcome. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Hi everyone, welcome to Cherry Chat. I'm your host, Meg. Um, I have the pleasure of talking to the multi-talented Alicia Debnam Carey today. Alicia stars in the new Hulu series, Saint X. Um, which you can check out on Wednesdays on Hulu or Tuesdays at 9 p.m. depending on your location. I'm super excited to chat with Alicia today. Hello, hello. Let me just see. I hope everyone's doing well. I've been loving this show. We had a new episode this week, which was incredible. Um, a really powerful episode. So I'm really excited to chat with Alicia about that. Hello, hello. Let me see here. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Okay, let's see. It's not quite 12.30. I hope everyone's doing well. Happy Thursday, which is basically Friday. Happy almost Friday. I can see we have so many Alicia fans tuning in. Wow, oh, hello, hello. I'm so excited to chat with her all about St. X and more. Have y'all been watching? Are y'all caught up? Yes, Alicia fans are here. I'm so good, thank you so much, Celeste, for asking. I'm excited that it's almost Friday. I'm excited that I, talk, that I get to talk to the lovely Alicia today. I mean, no complaints. Oh my gosh, hello from Italy, yay! Molto bene. <laughs> that was terrible, <laughs> apologies. <laughs> Hi everyone, talking to Alicia about St. X today and more. Um, I hope y'all are all caught up. Yes, me too. I loved the new episode that came out. Alicia was so fantastic in it. And so I'm gonna really dive into the specifics of that episode today. Yes, yes, hello from France. Oh my gosh, France, two from France, hello. What time is it in France? Wait, let me guess. Uh, 9 p.m. Hello from the Netherlands. Oh my gosh. All the fans are here. All right, let me see if we have Alicia. Hello, hello. Oh my gosh, thank you for tuning in. Okay. So much love. Love to see it. Okay, Alicia. Let's see. Do, do, do. Wow, there's lots of you here. Love to see it. Poland? My goodness. Denmark? Hello, Czech Republic? Wow. Belgium, England? My goodness. Venezuela, Turkey. This is a global cherry chat today and I'm loving it. Let's see. Germany, oh my gosh. Worldwide, worldwide cherry chat, we love it. Ecuador, another Italy, my gosh. All right, let's see. I have not met her. This is the first time I'll be interviewing her, so I'm super excited because I'm such a huge fan. It's always such a treat for me when I get to talk to someone who I really admire and I'm a fan of. I mean, what's better than that? Yes, the love is worldwide. Okay, let me see. I got her. Hey, Alicia. Sometimes I'm just like chatting away. Oh my gosh. 
Let's see. Hello, hello. Yes, hello. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Oh my, oh my gosh, the love that you've been getting. Oh. It is so beautiful to see. Like everyone from around the world is watching you and just loving you. I mean, the joy, that's just, it's just, it's just beautiful. This is so exciting. This is my first Instagram live, so I'm like, very new to it. It's like my first time seeing all this. I'm seeing everyone's comments. This is so fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yay. I'm so happy to be your first. And um, this is my favorite thing to do. It's really weird because when you hear like live, it feels a little daunting, but honestly, like it feels so intimate. Like it's just me and you, like we're just chatting. I think that's why I was, I was, I was a little like daunted by it. I was like, oh, like all these people are alive, except I'm, not seeing anyone and it's just <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a wig out but it's cool I'm excited yeah no I mean the love is just outpouring and like you said global and it's just so cool well it's lovely to meet you everyone was asking they're like is this your first time like meeting her I'm like yes I'm such a huge fan so this is such a treat for me oh thank you I'm so happy to this this is great Oh my gosh, what a love fest. Um, well, I know before we get into Say Next, which by the way, everyone has been loving, especially there's been a lot of comments about how just incredible this week's episode was. It was a big powerhouse episode. So we'll get to that in a minute. But I want to take it way back for a second. I want to take it way back. I know you've been performing forever since yeah. you were a kid. You're so multi-talented acting, singing, but do you remember, this may be tricky, but do you remember the first time you really fell in love with storytelling or like it, that aha moment of the impact that it can truly make? I definitely remember specifically the, the moment that happened really clearly. I was eight years old and I did a film um, and it was called Martha's New Coat. And it was, um, it was like, just sort of, I don't know, it, it was, it was an aha moment where I was suddenly surrounded by all these creative people and I realized you could do this. And everyone wanted to collaborate and, and, and it was playful and there were just like costumes and makeup and, and different locations every day. And every day was different and it was so exciting. And I think before that I'd always been a very creative kid like I'd always you know I, I was the typical like forcing my siblings and like family to like do plays with me in the backyard and perform them for our parents like I was very much like driven in that direction and and, and I, even with you like costumes and I was always like playing dress ups it was just that very like you know obnoxious sort of <laughs> attention seeking kid um, but I think it was when I was eight, I suddenly was in this film and, and it was the first time I really understood it as like, almost like its own little microcosm, its own world, because it wasn't just that it was, it sure there was a part of it that was like, oh, this is a job that like people do for real. But it was also like, this is kind of, I don't know, all those pieces together, but on a larger scale, it just was this. I, I, I was seeing it all put together in real time and, and it was like the grown-ups version of, of kind of what I'd been wanting playing you know since I was a kid so I just yeah it like fell in love with it there and I remember like I had a journal that I wrote, wrote and I'd like taken like I don't know three weeks off school or something and I came back and I was so just like I've had like a life change <laughs> I was like, you know, like, I just like understand the world differently and like, <laughs> or, but it did, it changed my entire perspective. I was just like, you know, I was treated like an adult as well, but it was like allowed to be in this creative space, but it was elevated and it was very special to me. That sounds so lo lovely. What a gift. And I mean, it sounds too like you gained this whole new perspective that just like opened your world up. And um, 
I think we're so impressionable at, at that age. And I think then to like be able to, like you said, that combination of like, this is a job, but this is also a dream come true. And this is, yeah. this is fun, but it's also, I have to take it seriously. And just what an experience. Um, it was, it was incredible. Very lucky experience too, to have at such a young age, to be able to like play yeah. on the, yeah, yeah, like like a circus. It was like the circus came to town, you know? <laughs> and I was like, whoa, the wall just opened. <laughs> Up. suddenly it was in like hyper color yeah 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 I love that um well speaking of collaboration I mean Saint X you have so many incredible I mean specifically like I just have to we have to give a shout out to like you know the women in the industry because at the end of the day this platform is all about you know supporting and uplifting women and non-binary folks in this kind of crazy love, industry by the way I absolutely <laughs> love that this is a space that shines a light on that and like highlights all these extraordinary women and it, it's and it's it is it's it's special yeah. you gotta, gotta keep doing it. i mean like it's like there's so much work to be done still and um and appreciating i think what you were saying earlier about that that um what you got to kind of see and experience when you were eight is like all the different facets of what goes into creating a story and from the writers to the director to the producers and you got to collaborate with some incredible women on this series. What did that mean to you? And what was that experience like? It's so important. And something that I think over the last couple of years, especially that I've, I've taken significant more interest in, but also so much more aware of, I think I actually attribute it to working on Fear the Walking Dead for a really long time, you know, because that was a lucky experience that I was able to work on a consistent show for like six, seven years and see, how it was changing in real time. And I think, you know, there is often, as you, to your point of like, there is a, a long way to go. I remember thinking like, okay, we're moving forward in a direction of like, there are a bit more, maybe more female writers being represented or like directors or, um, but for me, when I realized how, how little there were behind the scenes, mm. that was a really big realization for me. And then over the years, seeing how that's been implemented a little bit more. And I'm always thinking like, that's one thing that I kind of want people to, to know, especially in the industry, if you're like looking to get into the industry, there are all these other positions that we want female like representation in. Like there's, mm -hmm. you know, so many different facets. I think there's a typical, you know, you, we kind of have this idea of like, oh, hair or makeup or costumes, but <laughs> so many other in incredibly important things like sound mixing and, and a camera and, it, there's lighting, like there's just so many other areas that I just don't think we're even really privy to as women. And, and I think that was something that I was like, joying to see like that being occupied a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. Specifically, I mean, Dee Reese obviously did <sighs> our photo. She's extraordinary. Just such a visionary has such like an auto perspective. And I think really set this whole, you know, um, the look and the tone of what the show is and mm -hmm. it's really important to have her, you know, on board as, and especially in spearheading what this looked like. Um, and also to have Lila as the, you know, that was just having a female showrunner is really exciting. And, and uh, yeah, it was, there are so many important roles for females to have then like this is it, storytelling. And there are so many, platforms for that and I'm glad we're seeing it in some ways like the more known positions yeah. but I feel like it's great for people to know that also all this you know it takes a village to make a tv show a, a film it's not easy you know we was on our like you know in reality this is like there's of people working together to to make it happen there are all these positions for people so yeah Oh, I think uh, yeah. very lucky. No, a lot more of that happening. Oh, absolutely. And I always say too, it's like, you know, if you watch a movie or, you know, a TV show and you loved it so much, you know, obviously, like you're gonna kind of um, remember and keep track of the people of the actors that you fall in love with on screen. But pay attention to the credits. See who directed it. See who edited it. See who shot it. See who wrote it, and start following them as well. Yes. Um. 
you know? And I think that this is a per this show is a perfect example of that. Um, but okay, we got to get into this week's episode because Alicia, your performance was stunning. Um, it was so, you beautifully captured this, this societal pressure, I think, that's put on people to return to normalcy. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, that and, you know, and how important that is to see on screen because it's extremely relatable. Mm. We definitely had, you know, we talked about how this was not a neat mm. um, mm. portrait of a woman dealing with mental health. This was a very kind of messy and quite relatable and more realistic version of this which is you know I think especially with you know, TV narrative and the way that we consume media so much now it's like very you want it to feel very like tied up in a bow and like yeah. it's nice and, <laughs> and and what I really liked about this was that it was complicated and it was messy, and that just because you know there are so many levels and layers to someone trying to heal and grapple with the trauma and and it's not something that just disappears. It's something that someone has to like live with and, and develop tools and and ways that they can cope. And, and I, I, I liked that this was a representation of someone that it didn't feel so easy. Mm -hmm. Not in life. No. Like, it's not. I think everyone understands that feeling of just like, you know, I took one step forward and then suddenly two steps back. And and life is kind of this ebb and flow and this flux of mm -hmm. of healing and growing and changing yeah. and and the pressures that we put on ourselves, the societal pressures as you were saying too. Um, so I kind of I don't know, I, I my hope was with this character and for people watching it was that it didn't feel easily digestible. Mm -hmm. And that it didn't feel like a character that some you were like you know, you understood where she was coming from. You understood, like, maybe where her motives were, but they, that they were still sort of at some times, like, you know, hard to get on board with and, like, difficult and, and at times unlikable. You know, I think I find a lot of joy in characters that um, are a bit messy at the edges and a little frayed and, and have these kind of unhinged moments because that's, we all live in those places sometimes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so true. That was so beautifully said. I mean, I think this is why messiness, messiness is beautiful, right? I mean, it's like, it's what gives us life. It's what makes us human. And I think that, you know, whether we consciously or unconsciously do this, we take from what we see and we, we learn from what we see. And if we don't see the messiness, then we don't accept the messiness within ourselves. And um, especially when it comes to grieving and trauma, these are not linear things and they sneak up on you when you least expect it and you don't know necessarily what's gonna trigger trauma. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so important. And I think too, the fact that it's very smart. I mean, this is just good writing, mm -hmm. uh, writers. Um, it's very smart that also Emily is a you know, documentarian. So she's innately curious. She's innately seeking the truth. She's a truth seeker. And then for that to combat with her sort of going through her own um, mental health journey and trauma and grief, it's just really powerful. And it allows for this like lens, this like yeah. really cool lens to kind of discover all of that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And just, you know, uh, it, and it gets even more so, like uh -huh. I think my episodes are, I'd say like six, seven, eight really do like, and really was like attracted to this, you know, this story purely because it was this very unique psychological downward spiral of someone and that it isn't linear, as you said, it is sort of all over the place. And, you know, I, I also like to think, you know, this is a person who is sort of two fractured parts of a personality. You know, this was, a child that dealt with like trauma that sort of then paralyzed her in her development in so many ways mm -hmm. and then had to fill a void as you know as a sister in a family that had this sort of you know a, this yeah this vacuum and and so she sort of become two different personalities and i think this was 
you know, uh, for me, a um, journey to marry them back. To me. And yeah. the truth of her trying to figure out what's going on, it's also this sort of, you know, truth to figure out who she is. Mm -hmm. Those two parts for herself were to kind of come back together, I think. Yeah, and I think that it's also like really powerfully shown too through her relationships and like with the relationship with her parents, with her coworkers, with her boyfriend, with all these relationships where, you know, there's all that line of like when he was saying um, in this episode, I miss you. Was it I miss you? Yeah. And it's like it's right there, but it's like clearly like how it's like that. Oh, it's like he did. He didn't mean it's not like meant to be a hurtful thing. It's meant to be a loving sentiment, but it's hurtful. It is it is, and it's like you know. I I think he says like I miss you. Like you know, like come back to me soon. Yeah. Like I'm trying. Like I am trying, and this is not just some thing I can just turn on and it's fixed. You know, it's yeah. It's the interesting portrait of trauma. Mm. And I like, like that dynamic between the boyfriend and, and her too, because it is also, and that gets, that gets even more. Oh, like, I can tell. I feel like we, we kind of saw that coming. We're like seeing that coming a little bit. Yeah. It, it just feels very, <laughs> yeah. It's very truthful. It's very truthful. And I think that, um, and that's also a testament to your performance. I think that you, um, it's a, it's a it's a role that requires an immense amount of vulnerability and and but also she's got her guard up it's like that oh, so that's sweet spot and you you just play it so well um you you're kind of channeling both the vulnerability and also the shell um and that's where the magic happens well, i'm so glad you think so <laughs> i do I was, know. <laughs> it was i was sometimes like i was getting yeah the, that mix properly Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, can you give us, without a spoiler, I know this is so hard, and oh. <laughs> can, you <give> us, like, <laughs> can you give us like a word or a vibe that like best describes the upcoming episode? It's hard, but it's like, you know, every, everyone gets so like, you know, anxious. They just need but to I'll say six and seven mm -hmm. were my favorite episodes to shoot mm -hmm. I believe that's what's coming six is coming next I think because five or seven oh is it I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at seven. I'm seven's look it up just so we I like binged it so I'm like I can five. tell you where we left off she went to um hold on let's see I'm gonna make sure we can't get anyone angry at us okay well that's why I'll just be like Six and seven. Six is coming up. You're right. You're absolutely right. I thought, okay. I think this, these two episodes, we really did tandem. And, and they operate a lot more in that kind of um, lightning in a bottle space. Mm -hmm. Really be just about to like, the lid's about to blow off. And, and I think if, you know, you've been waiting to see sort of like, where it all starts to come loose and, and watching a character that's really just sort of holding on and it's getting worse and, and you know, she's lying more and, and but the truth is sort of starting to reveal itself. It's, this is where you see, I guess, this, what this character chooses to do under immense amount of pressure. And, and in that kind of like messiness that we were discussing earlier, oh. that kind of, it's um it was my favorite episodes to shoot because it just mm -hmm. felt like the most raw yeah. so i think if people are wanting to see yeah where a character kind of like slips and falls before it gets better like mm -hmm. they're, they're um really yeah interesting powerful episodes that are oh, wow. Oh, I look forward to that. I have chills. I'm like, woo! I could just like, I mean, that makes so much sense. I think where we left it off with episode five, it's like, you can tell it's like, there's a kind of a fork in the road a little bit and um, things are going to get, like you said, messy and raw before. It gets better. Uh -huh. and, you know, this sort of, 
No, no, no. We, there, we talked a lot about, I think, in these last, th those two, these upcoming episodes as well, this idea of, you know, without sounding too, like, woo-woo about it, but, <laughs> I mean, which I, I totally subscribe to anyway, but there's this sort of, you know, when people have a shared trauma, which mm -hmm. these characters do, mm -hmm. uh, there, we talked a lot about this push and pull of a thread of existence mm -hmm. and this sort of serendipity and coincidence and this loop, this sort of um, constant aerobos, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. that snake eating itself, this mm -hmm. sort of filling prophecy. We sort of talked a lot about that in this episode and this sort of need to to seek out things that are almost sometimes all to us and this desire to to lean into those signals and messages and coincidences and thought processes it's yeah it was we we kind of wanted to make it feel uncomfortable in that uh, a bit more like energetic cosmic space. That sounds yeah. a lot. Yeah. Oh no, that's yeah. Very. That's very cool. I totally get that. I totally get that. And I think too, it's. I was thinking about this recently, like, also with the show. You know, Emily is feeling very, I think, isolated. Also, and when that happens, she has people in her life that, that love her. And I think she knows that. I don't think she feels unloved. She feels that, but she, but to your point, when you have, when there's someone who has experienced the same trauma as you to feel sort of, to seek out that feeling seen and feeling that connection, even though it can be really harmful, it's so, it's such a human reaction when we're feeling so isolated. Yes. And that kind yeah. of, you know, that, that, that idea of like, I mean, I'm having to sort of thought that that kind of the taxi driver being the therapist or someone who's mm -hmm. almost so removed. And I think she can hide behind this, you know, this performance and this shell of someone else. Yeah. The, her actual true self to this man who does know her sort of better than a lot of, in a very different way, but like, you know, when you flash back to her and, and go go then at the resort, like very kind person. And so for her to try and wrap her head around this and to be like, how can I be myself, this sort of young, naive, childlike personality mm -hmm. with this, but still have then this shared trauma, trauma that I think he's imposed upon, you know, upon her. It's, um, it's just so unique. And, and yeah, yeah I mean, John, Josh and I, I mean, Josh Bonzi, who plays Clive, is just extraordinary. Right? And mm -hmm. so it's not just stunningly. And he's also just happens to be the loveliest human being. <laughs> like, genuinely gorgeous. Um, yeah. And I think just you know, the two of us really did, we agreed that, that because of that isolation and that loneliness that the two of them share too, like, it brings them together. And it makes it that sort of, like, it's almost like uh, I it, I want to say almost like a like a, like not a catch twenty two but like the two of them are able to talk to each other not knowing that while they're hiding behind a mask they're actually the truth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, it, this, I mean, this is why this show is so fantastic. It's like the the complexities of all of this. It just makes it so intriguing and fascinating and. Like we said before, relatable, relatable. It's like the rawness allows it to be relatable. And that's like, to me, the best kind of storytelling. Um, well, I know I can't keep you forever, even though I could talk to you forever. Uh <laughs> I'm like, oh, like I, it took me a second to be like, like I was, I was looking at some of the comments. I was like, well, this is like really like, you know, confusing but then I was like oh my god now we're just having like a whole chat so I loved it exactly that's what I love it's like it, it weirdly becomes so intimate yeah. which is like so wild to me I, um and why people are into these yeah I, because yeah. it feels very accessible and intimate yeah exactly yeah it's just like two people chatting um even though a lot of folks are watching <laughs> <laughs> there's so much love yeah. Well, before I let you go, again, 
all about supporting each other, uplifting each other. I'm so sorry. I know this is such a tough question. And I know that you have so much incredible work in the pipeline, but who's currently really inspiring you right now? Who do you want to collaborate with next? I'm sure there's a long list, but. Gosh, I know. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. You <laughs> um, can manifest. <laughs> wow. I really, I, the one that's coming to mind right now, honestly, is because I happen to be, I was very lucky enough to do, attend the Chanel Cruise show the other day. Mm. Sophia Coppola was in front of me. And I mean, she's just like one of my top like, like directors and, and kind of has been one of my like biggest inspirations since I was a kid too. Cause I think it was the first time I really saw, like I adored Lost in Translation. I, love Marie Antoinette even though it story wise was a little uh, but <laughs> it was like delightful and I thought it like, I just I love her her like freshness and I love her take so to, I was suddenly like I've got to manifest this like I've got to manifest like working with her in some capacity um but I don't know there are so many uh, there's so many great people I want to work with. There's so many like great women I want to work with too. Um, I feel like I'm on the spot and I no, can't think I, of any. No, but they, that was wonderful. Like Sophia, I mean, that stuff totally makes sense. I feel like the two of you would be sort of this like little match made in heaven. Um, and I agree. Like she has, even from the beginning, she had such a distinct voice um, that felt so unique at the time and continues to feel like you said fresh and new and like what a freaking force to be able to kind of continue oh. continue surprising and delighting us um and diving into kind of the unknown and not being afraid to try things that may not be necessarily like i don't know i mean like she's literally created a new genre almost yeah and you know what i loved as well i think what made me so like attracted to her style uh, her approach especially mm -hmm. as a, that she it was the first person i really saw of someone that didn't i have to hide a femininity in such uh, a yeah you know this sort of even the way she operates on set the way she conducts herself the way she like wears clothing to me that was also really inspiring because it was i'm quite a like you know i, I love clothes I love fashion I love like dressing up like it's a really big part of my personality and I suddenly was seeing someone that also was celebrating that too in her own and I just felt like that wasn't something I saw very often to me it was like hey you can both yeah you, can and both. you don't necessarily have to because you know directing for example is such a male dominated in industry like mm -hmm. we're getting but it is so heavily male male dominated that to see then sometimes it feels like you have to like fit in to yeah. yes and it just seemed like she was one of those people that I was like oh you don't subscribe to that no. and, and I still love it true. that's so true especially the time that she like came up yes um like young and too. did not did not subscribe to that and she was just unapologetically her and you're right she made you know um you know, femininity, like, not a weakness, <laughs> not a <laughs> which we had seen up until that point. I mean, I, and um, it is really, I, I also think of, like, Greta Gerwig, who yes. does that, too, or feel like, that's, fun. that's it. Oh, my God. I thank God you said that. <laughs> I, I was gonna Isn't that funny how that happens, where it's, like, on the tip of your brain, tip of your tongue? It was almost as well, because I feel like I, this question came up recently, and I, I felt like I had the same thing where I was like, you know, sometimes like when someone asks like, what's your favorite movie? And you're like, God. You're like, don't, don't, don't put me on the spot. Oh, no. um, but I, this one, I, I, this kind of similar question came up and I remember thinking later, I was like, Greta Gerwig, like the, obviously, oh, a hundred percent. Like, the, and talk about someone as well, who's like, I found out that, you know, she also like in the way she directs it, very embracing her of her settings and her like did you see that she yes like, yes that's what i was thinking of when you were talking about sophia dressing yes you know like mm -hmm. all her in the barbie movie she's like wearing all pink and <laughs> she, it's all like cottage core it's i love it i love it too and i 
just thought, and just to watch her, I don't know, I've watched some of the behind the scenes of her directing too, and it's, mm -hmm. it's so, so vulnerable mm -hmm. and abrasive and quite like um, sweet. Yeah, and I love sweet. not this right. sort of it's like safe. It feels safe. And um, I mean, like, I, I feel like you're referring, because like, this is what comes to mind when you say that, that it's like when she's like tender as a director, that, that um, have you seen that clip of like Saoirse and yes. Lucas? Yes. yes. And I think that totally encapsulates like her as a director and like she really is there to play. Um, and that's that's a wonderful full, full circle moment of like what you were saying about your experience when you were eight, how you were like, this is professional, but I also get to play. And why yes. can't we have both? There's no need to be, you know, this like, this like sad, stupid notion that film sets have to be rigid and hard and, um, you know, cruel. Um, and I feel it reminded me too that first, that first movie was directed by Ford. And I think that in, and now I'm sort of putting the pieces together. I think there's a big link why female directors inherit quite a lot. Um, and it's something, you know, I've had, you know, I've got a lot of interest in and I've directed an episode of Fear the Walking Dead myself, which is amazing. Um, and something I'm interested in pursuing too. So I think it's interesting that it all comes back to, to those being my inspiration. I, love that. I mean, I love actor directors. Yes. I think that there's just something really, not that directors on their own are not gorgeous, talented humans, but I think there's something to be said about these multi-hyphenate artists that are really special and we're seeing more of, because why, why not? Why not? Why, why not? It, why not? I, exactly. uh, well, I can't wait to see, like, your, I can't wait for your feature film, but, but no, I can't wait to see what you wear during <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> like, a, like, spreadsheet look for everyone. <laughs> Uh, Here's my Pinterest of my yeah. avatar. I love it so much. Well, you are such a gem. Thank you so much for joining me today. This was a blast. It was, um, thank you. I had such a time. Oh my I God. God. That means the world to me. And um, oh my gosh, St. X, new episodes, Tuesdays or Wednesdays, depending on I, your coast. For me, I think it's Tuesdays at 9 p.m., but Wednesdays at midnight. Um, yeah. But it's such an excellent show. Congratulations on everything. And um, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is lovely. Much love. Bye. Bye. And thanks, everyone. <laughs>